forget, you can hear the full-length, longer version wherever you get your podcasts. Mairead and I know each other because we mm -hmm. shot this big new thing, which I think is coming out it's months away. I mean, it, we yeah. can't be promoting it now, Mairead. No, we no, could, no. We could whet we people's appetites, That's couldn't it. we? Yeah. What is my Lady Jane that we've both filmed together? Well, I suppose, well, we'll start with saying it's a dramedy, mm -hmm. drama comedy, mm -hmm. um, set in Tudor times. Sometimes an excuse that for a comedy that isn't funny. That's not the case. <laughs> it's not the case. It's very quick witted. Seen, we've already seen the first two episodes and yes, we were rather we have. pleased, weren't we? Yeah, very pleased. And yeah. I think it's, it's very, I mean, the writing of it was incredibly quick and there's such a clear tone just when you read the script, like it's all there. But then not only that, they've got like, I think we can say this incredible actors on it. Like they've announced everyone who's in it, haven't yeah, they? Yeah. Like you've got Jim Broadbent, yourself, and the Chancellor. Yeah. Like I couldn't believe it when I read the list of people that were going to be in it. I was yeah. like, okay, I contain got, myself. They've here. got all the oldies that still have their faculties, like me, <laughs> Jim Broadbent, oldies were goodies, and a Chancellor. <laughs> and then they've got exciting new talent. They've mm. got exciting new talent. People who naming no names get cast the minute they leave drama school in a Kenneth Branagh film. Not just any Kenneth Branagh film, but Belfast, the one that goes and gets the Oscar. And I, feel, I feel like I've, I've really been, I've really flown the flag of Belfast by saying that I was in that film. If you watch it, I do one little thing in it and this is it. That's it. Yeah, but, but listen, <laughs> that's all listen, I've got. If I'd but been in a Kenneth Branagh film this at your is a thing. tender age, I would have retired. This is it. Like it is, it, it was the best possible way to be introduced to the industry. Like he is phenomenal. And from doing like, I think it was about five days work we did. And it was myself and two other people who were in my year. And we all played extended family members of like the main family. And I, I can't describe how welcomed we were into the set. Like I have a very specific memory and it's something that's like stayed in my mind and has it's something that I've been taught to do on shows like Extraordinary, let's say, where I was the lead, to make sure that I welcome people onto set. But that'll come from the top down and Ken Branagh exactly. is is he's just very impressive. Yeah. He just I would say sort of sort of gets everything right, mm. really, you know. And someone who you know, I, I think I, I went to Rada, which of which he is the president of. Mm. They turned me down. And did they? Mm. But they're sorry now. It's nice of you to say that. Ideally, you'd have expressed a little shock. Sorry, should we do well, that again? Said, yeah, yeah. Okay, we'll edit that bit out as well. They turned me down. You're joking. No, they did. What? Yeah. How many times did you try? Once. Maybe if you went back again, maybe. No, they had their chance. Too late now? Yeah. What do you mean too late now? I'm, I'm doing fine. <laughs> Can't go to drama school now, Mairead. What are you talking about? They're I'm 58. They're not ages. You could have 58. anyone inside in there. Who knows? But why would I go now? I've got my own podcast. <laughs> Living the dream. So you were at RADA. Yes. Because yeah. due to some administrative error, they'd let you in and you're there. <laughs> I actually applied with the name Rob Ryden and then they Did said, you? please come on in. We want to correct <laughs> the mistakes of the past. How intimidated were you? When I did my RADA audition, I was, I was out of my depth and I felt I don't belong. I, yeah, I think I, I think I was oblivious to a lot of the, um, I suppose, prestige that Rada had. I knew it from Google. I knew it from Googling about it and hearing you that people... You knew it from Google? Sorry, that sounds very ignorant. I mean, but in turn, it wasn't something that was in my circles at home. We didn't talk. We didn't really know what Rada was, I would say. Sweet Lord. I wouldn't have grown up like that aware of it. I didn't really know what drama school was until I was probably... 15, 16 and thinking, oh, maybe I'd like to be an actor. Yeah, yeah. Um, And then it was from Googling actors that I knew and then seeing they went to Rad, I was like, oh, right, okay. And you also Googled who did they turn down? <laughs> Let's see the kind of dross that they don't accept. And you thought, oh, they turned that that idiot from Would I Lie To You down. Then I'm, I'm going there. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> so you did your audition. Did you sense that it went well? I think I did. I, I realise looking back now, because I auditioned in Dublin and what happens if you, oh. so this is it, if you do the auditions in Dublin and they like you, they bring you straight to the fourth round. So you don't have to go through the kind of rigmarole of... There was none of that in my day, you know. They, I wasn't auditioning in Port Talbot. I had to get no, on the no. coach and go to London. Very intimidating. See, that's it. And I think there's, when you said, you asked a question about like belonging, I think... When I did go to the school for the fourth round, I felt so out of place. 
Nah. Like, it was one of the first times that I was not understood because of my accent. Mm. And, it, and it really shook me. And, and I remember thinking, God, if I got in here, I don't know if I could go here. But when I did get the offer, I kind of was like, well, there's no way I'm turning this down. Because well, they, they're going, I'm sorry, what did you say? It was a, do you know what it was? We mm. were doing, um, it was, so, it was a, a such a clear memory to me. We were doing a kind of scene workshop of um, Miss Julie. Mm. And uh, your man asked the guy who's facilita facilitating the workshop, he said, does anyone know what a valet is? And I kind of said, uh, put my hand up, someone who parks cars. He said, sorry? He said, someone who parks cars. <laughs> And I realized then that he didn't actually hear me. He didn't, like, he didn't understand what I was saying. I, I kept going like, parks cars, parks cars. And everyone in the room was just like, they knew what I was saying, whether it was from, they were, you know, they might have been from similar areas or, yeah. you know, up north or whatever. And then someone said, oh, pox cause. And I thought, oh, okay. Oh. But I remember in that moment kind of going, I've never felt like this before. And I felt like an outsider. I felt like I was, you know. Had you spent much time over here prior to that? No, no, no. Well, just, I think, on holiday when we might have come. Sir Kenneth is president. Mm -hmm. How often do you see him? Does he come in often? He would come in, I think, for... Actually, in my first year, he did uh, Hamlet with Tom Hiddleston. So we would have seen okay. him around the building. <laughs> right. Yeah, <laughs> we would have seen him around the building when he was doing that. More exciting for the students to be in the presence of Hiddleston or Branagh? It was always very exciting when Tom Hiddleston was snuck in the back door he for one of the third year shows. He was yeah. snuck in. And if you were ushering that day, then your usher seat might be might be near him. So you kind of go, oh, I was ushering today and Tom Hiddleston was in. Like, there was a great excitement. But I do think, you know, he, I only from RADA, from going to RADA, knew more, got to know more about Kenneth Branagh. Same with Mike Lee. I, feel, I didn't know who Mike Lee was before I went mm -hmm. to RADA and then found yeah. out about his, you know. Yeah. Amount of well, you work wouldn't. And, what are you? Twenty five. Yeah. Uh, twenty four. You're twenty four. Yeah. Well, why? Why would you? Mm -hmm. You know, these the, we we forget as we get older, and it'll happen to you. <laughs> so you leave Rada. Mm -hmm. They ask you to leave, and <laughs> you you should jump in there and say no. They didn't. Uh, <laughs> you leave Rada, Clear my name. and lo and behold, how does the Belfast job come about then? Does Ken, first of all, because he's very loyal to Rada, he isn't is. he? No, he's he's very loyal. And and that's it. I mean, we didn't know he was doing Belfast. We didn't know that that was his plan. And quite hilariously, we were doing a reading of scenes from the big picture, Owen McCafferty play. And we jumped on the Zoom, Zoom one day to do it. This was during COVID. So March mm. 2020, I was meant to graduate in July 2020. It was all cut short, obviously, because oh. of COVID. But... Um, we then hopped on a Zoom a couple of weeks later, all of us in our own homes, and we see that Kenneth Branagh's on the call. <laughs> We're all just looking at his box, being like, what? And he was doing a Zoom, sorry, he was doing this reading with us and playing one of the main parts in it. And obviously we were all kind of there sitting like googly eyed and thinking, why the hell is he here? We can't understand. And I don't know whether that was him scouting us out, like to see. I think it was. I presume so, yeah. I think it was. And also it was a huge lesson just sitting there and watching him work like it was just mm. magic. Mm -hmm. And then it was a couple of weeks later, uh, or it would have been quite a while later because he filmed that in August 2020. Uh, I remember sitting up in Ali Pali, which is strangely where I get a lot of my good news. Sometimes if I'm waiting for an audition, I'll just go up and sit in Ali Pali, <laughs> just looking <laughs> down, <laughs> crossing my fingers. But got a call saying, oh, there's an, we have an offer for you to play a part in Belfast. And that was it. It was an offer. And I mean, this is it. We we didn't have written lines, but on my first day, I turned up and was handed, you know, Ken came over and he handed me his piece of paper that had a couple of lines and he said oh I've got this for you just as you're coming into the scene maybe improv a bit of this I'll cover it just you know improv around it I remember thinking oh Christ I don't think I've ever even you know improv in a setting in my life like that wasn't in a rehearsal room I, I'm terrified to do this again sat up in my room just kind of freaking out and there was a five o'clock start so I was wanting to sleep but then was too nervous to sleep and uh -huh. all that but um but yeah it was a wonderful experience and he is very loyal and very Nurturing, I think. Ah, he's um, just he's the best. Students. He's just the best. Yeah. Um, was uh, extraordinary the, the 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 next thing then? No, so I did a play that I, I kind of did over the course of two years. Really, I'd done it at the Dublin Fringe, and then we, I went to the Edinburgh Fringe with that. That was with a friend of mine, Harry, who I met through doing that play, and he's become one of my closest friends now, which is a joy. And again, that was actually comedy too. And then I did Tell Me Everything, which was an ITV show. 
yeah. where I played a um, <laughs> kind of a, a rugged woman who ends up shagging her cousin. Lovely. Okay. But but how do you make that leap to to play? You know, it's great to be getting parts. Yeah. Then the lead role. Yes. In yeah. A yeah. Disney Plus show. Now, if it's Disney Plus, does that mean it goes out everywhere? Around yes, the world? I think Hulu in America, but it is pretty much everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't. I couldn't tell you. I mean, it came out. I had a, an audition for it. I remember reading the first two episodes and reading the audition script and thinking, God, I can't wait to watch this. Yeah. And that was it. It was That's a case great. of, I can't wait to watch it. That's it was great. never, I never anticipated getting it. Did you think you were right for the part? I did. I, I think I read, I read the scenes and yeah. I thought, oh, I, I know how to do this. I can, mm. and, and it, it's always a joy when you read it. It's not, it doesn't happen much when you read a script like that and you mm. go, oh, I know how to do this. It's in my bones. Like yeah, I, yeah. I have the ability. Um, And I did the tape and loved it. And then got a call a couple of weeks later to kind of say, oh, they want to meet you. And I hadn't, ever had an in-person audition at that stage. It was because COVID you're, times. you're part of that generation that, yeah. that didn't experience that. Which is a shame. Like, I think, I wish, I feel like there's not a, as much of a percentage of auditions that are in person anymore. No, like I know, because it's it's easier for so much easier. producers to just yeah. get you on Zoom. Which is a shame, because I think, like, I, I often think, I'm like, oh, if you met me, or if you just got to, yeah, if I got yeah. to meet people. Well, they may they like you sense. even less when they've met you. <laughs> You're absolutely right. But it's it's possible. Look, it's, <laughs> know, I'm not maybe, saying they would, no. but, but it's possible, isn't it? Yeah. It's possible. Yeah. Um, when you signed on for this, did you have to sign uh, for a squillion years if, if they if they want you? It's it's for four four seasons. Four if seasons, it. yeah. Okay. I mean, to be honest, I'd do it for as long as I could. Would I you? absolutely adore it. I really do. And the four of us who were the main cast, we get on like a house oh, on fire. Lovely. Did that become a, a success straight off? As in when it when it just yeah was, when it came, it came out, out, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's it's always hard to gauge these things, isn't it? It's yeah. not like. You know, it's different from when you've got like weekly television or you kind of know the numbers, yes, I suppose. Yes, it is different. Yeah, yeah. The way you kind of judge it is if you're getting recognised, I think. Yeah. Like if people are saying to you, oh, I've watched the show and yeah. I really like it, then, you know, that's a nice way you've to You've already judge shot it. the second season. We you? have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was a weird, it was such a strange time because we, it came out the week before we started filming the second season. So we were kind of jumping between, oh. yeah, we were jumping between doing loads of press for it and then in the midst of rehearsals. Which it, I found that quite difficult because you're so aware of this product that you're kind of having to, you're so aware of it being a product, I guess. Mm. Whereas when you're in the process of filming it, you don't feel like that. It's this, you know, story and these characters that you adore and you're enjoying the process of being on set and doing the filming of it. But um, but it was funny coming back then for the second season because it was weird having watched it and mm. knowing the tone. I think I haven't really... That's an interesting observation, knowing yeah. the tone. Yeah, because when you go into something, you don't really, you have an idea of the tone. Yeah. But then did you find that you had to... I always think when a show has been a hit and it comes back for its second series, it can be tempting for the actors to slightly up it a little bit because mm -hmm. they go, oh yeah, they like it when I do this and they seem to like it when I do that. And without even trying, you can end up doing that a little bit more. Oh, it's almost like you're doing an impersonation. That's of, right. Of I've, I've observed that in shows, yeah. you know. Um, I always remember when The Office came back for its second series, I was so pleased that they didn't do that. You know, they mm. didn't up it. They got the balance right. Because I remember, I remember thinking it had been so well received. I remember thinking, oh, they're tricky now when they when when they come back. Mm. But you think you you you've avoided that that pitfall. I, I fa it, you know what? It took me two weeks to really re of filming in the first uh, when we came back for the second season to relax into it. I feel yeah. because we were, as I say, we were in the midst of doing press. We were in the midst of of thinking about the show in a different way, of needing yes, to describe right. it. Yes. Even of when you sit down and describe your character, yeah. you know, when you're doing a press junket, it's thirty times a day, and then you need to step back into that character, and also watching that character that you've explored from the inside, then watching it on the TV, with music behind it, with, you know, the kind of colouring of the show, when it's all kind of put together it and packaged with the another thing, doesn't it? Yes. It's a different thing. And that's what I felt like I was doing, when we came back initially, I felt like I was doing an impression of myself. And, you know, those kind of thoughts that come into your head, like, as you say, oh, they like it when I yeah. furrow the brows like that, or, you know. And I, I, it took me a while to really 
relax into it. And I think that's why I'm nervous about watching it because I <laughs> will be scared to see those moments. But I think in order to lose that, you just need to kind of focus on the story and um, who's sitting opposite you and yeah. just, you know, focus yeah, on yeah. the actual scenes. And the writing's so good that you can do that. You can rely on that. And where does our show, My Lady Jane, fit in this timeline? So I filmed that, start, we started filming in September and I had just been at the Edinburgh Fringe for that whole month of August. Mm -hmm. So when I turned up on the 1st of September to uh, Bournemouth and was expected to run for about three hours of the day in this massive dress, jumping over logs, I was very concerned. Because this <laughs> is, this is set this. in, the thing that we've done is set in Tudor times mm -hmm. and has remarkable costumes and uh, I mean I've never worn as many different costumes yeah. and they were all handmade they're spectacular yeah it's, yeah, yeah it's it's um it's it, it's quite something um talk briefly for the people watching and listening about our show tell them what it is mm -hmm. um, I don't know when this interview that we are speaking in now yeah. will go out and we don't know when my lady jane we don't will go out we thought it was going to go out some point in 24 but i had such fun making it tell people what it is so it's a uh rewriting of lady jane gray's story mm. um and tudor times gorgeous costumes as we were saying already very quick wit very uh doesn't hold back there's a lot of kind of modern language in it as well at times my favourite one that uh, that Emily Bader had to say was bollocks. She said bollocks every five minutes. She and did. I loved the writing of that. She did. It was so good. Um, Quite fruity as well. It is very fruity. Very fruity. Very Fruitier fruity. than I realised. Yes, me too, when mm. I, we were watching it. We, and the second episode has a lot of fruit. Indeed. The That's bowl where it all gets is going. full. The fruit bowl is heaving. Heavy fruit. Heavy fruit. <laughs> Heavy fruit. <laughs> and... Uh, I'm actually quite nervous because I think I, I get fruity in the first kind of four minutes of it. Tell everybody who you play. So I play Susanna, who is uh, Jane's right-hand woman and best friend since when they were young. Mm -hmm. And she, I don't think I'm spoiling it here, but she has a secret that Jane didn't know about. Careful, careful. careful now. Don't give careful. away that secret. No. Nope. Because there are secrets. Yes, many. In this show. Mm -hmm. um, and Dudley's got a few of his own. I it? play Dudley. In case you're wondering who she was talking about, mm. that's that's my role. He pops up briefly in episode six. Um, <laughs> it was great fun to do, wasn't it? It was brilliant fun. It was, and such a, there was a large cast of us as well, which oh, I just tons. And I love, I love Thank nothing you. more than. Oh, sorry, what? <laughs> There's more to that sentence. Oh, sorry. But I love nothing more than sitting around for hours with. Thank uh, you. People. <laughs> Oh, sorry, you don't mean, you mean generally. Sorry, sorry. And Go you on. as well, Ralph. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, thank yeah. you. Thank you. But I do love that. I love sitting around for hours and being forced to talk to people. Yeah, and but don't you find that, don't you find, I like that up to a point. Okay. But it's kind of infantilizing as well. Don't you find you end up having the dumbest conversations? I kind of love that though. Wait, you mean, you wait till you're 58, you may tire of it. You've worked on 75 jobs. You might, you might, you might. I, I think at 24, it's probably, but then yeah. you, you, yeah. You, you, you and just, it's, to, to be fair, on Lady Jane, I was coming in and out. So like there was uh, times where I'd be off for four weeks and then come in for a week. Oh, and two, okay. No, I was. And come in with boundless yeah. energy and be chatting. Exactly. And, yeah. And you can gauge straight away if someone is kind of like, okay, I've been here for five days on the trot. You're going to leave me alone now, please. And there's <laughs> also, because it's a costume piece and everybody is in oh, very yeah. elaborate costumes, I sometimes feel that only adds to the feeling of what am I doing with my time? Yeah. When, when you are sat there, sometimes for hours, waiting to do something, dressed in the most I've got tights on, and this fancy <laughs> stuff and a cloak and everything. And oh, or if you're doing intimacy scenes, you've got a massive bulging like, pillow between your legs. Not a worry for, for me. <laughs> there were no intimacy so scenes with for Bob. <laughs> No, it, it, it turns out when they were scripting it, they didn't picture old Bryden in an intimate scenario. I made some humorous comments about intimate scenarios, yes. but, but that was as far as it went. You got away with this. And that's fine by me. <laughs> this, I, I think that boat has sailed. Um, yeah. So don't agree. Um, <laughs> 
<laughs> there so, might be reshoots. So it's not we, too late. <laughs> it is too late. <laughs> so I've shaved my beard off. I had a beard, you see. Oh, so. yes, that's right. You kind of had... It was you a, remember? You didn't recognize me. It was a goatee business, wasn't it? Was it was a goatee. Goatee, that was It was a goatee. <laughs> so it was. It was the go-to beard. The goatee was the go-to. Were you one of the only ones who had to have a beard for it? Um, Dominic well, I, didn't, did he? I did Dominic Cooper have a beard? I don't... I think he did, but I don't know whether he, he would normally have one and did he just have it? No, his was a proper beard. Oh, it was. I remember it now. Yeah. Mine was more sort of late period George Michael. Mm. With all that was of the inspo. that, uh, that was the that was the inspiration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Mairead, thank you so much for coming thank you. in. What are you most excited for people to go off now and watch? Is is it uh, extraordinary? Is that the thing? I think so. I think it's the perfect if someone's sitting around on a Sunday and doesn't have anything yeah. to do because they can go on to hours. Disney Plus and watch the first season now. That's it. It's all there. Yeah. yeah. And, and who knows? We don't know when this is going out. Maybe they could watch the second season. Who as knows? As well. We we'll don't see. know. It depends yeah. when when this goes out. And Lady Jane. And well, yeah. In 2026. That's right. <laughs> or early 27, perhaps. <laughs> Mairead, thank you so much. Thank you. I'm going to lean forward and shake you by yes, the hand. Let's do it. There you go. And let go. Slide now. to the camera. Yeah. Please let me go. On three.